On the History Traveler series, we've been showing some of our visit to Pearl Harbor on the island of Oahu. Now, a lot of people, whenever they think of December 7th, they think about Pearl Harbor itself and, you know, Battleship Row and, and all of the terrible things that happened in that place. What people may not realize is that there were attacks that occurred all around the island on some of the air bases in Oahu, including one on the eastern side of the island uh, called Kaneohe Bay. There was a naval air station there in that place. And it was at the naval air station in Kaneohe Bay where one of the very first officers was killed on the attack on December 7th, 1941. And here at the Gettysburg Museum of History, they have some of his possessions. Right here in the World War II room of the Gettysburg Museum of History is the uniform of a naval aviator from New Cumberland, Pennsylvania by the name of Lee Fox. So Lee Fox uh, is thought to be one of the, the first uh, officers who was killed on the attack on Pearl Harbor. And right here, well, we can see a postal telegraph. And on it, it says, the, Naval, or the Navy Department deeply regrets to inform you that your son, Ensign Lee Fox, Jr., United States Naval Reserve, was lost in action in the performance of his duty and in the service of his country. The department extends to you its sincerest sympathy in your great loss. And then stop. Uh, to prevent possible aid to our enemies, please do not divulge the name of his ship or station. Stop. If remains are recovered, they will be interred temporarily in the locality where death occurred, and you will be notified accordingly. And uh, that was from Rear Admiral C.W. Nimitz, Chief of the Bureau of Navigation. Wow. That is something else. So Kaneohe Bay uh, was the, the site of, uh, I think there were 33 PBYs. Uh, so the, the Japanese would have wanted to have taken that out very early on in the attack to prevent any reconnaissance uh, from taking place on the Japanese fleet. Um, so anyway, out of the 33, I think all but six were destroyed and Lee Fox was one of the men who lost his life there. Uh, but the uniform is not the only thing that they have here. Uh, we're going to take a look at a few other items that were in the possession of this naval aviator. I'm going to go over some of our archive on Lee Fox. You know, besides his uniform, we also have uh, some of the photographs and, and letters that he wrote. Um, I wanted to point out this. Th this is the pants that go with the uniform. I, I didn't want to pull the uniform out of the case, but I wanted to point out it does have a, a tailor's um, tag in it. That both, both the jacket and the pants have this, and it says L. Fox, and it says January 24th, or 21st, 1941, um, at, from the Naval Uniform Shop in Brooklyn, New York. Now, Lee Fox was commissioned in the Navy. Um, he went to flight school in Florida, and um, he actually took a plane across the country, and there's a, there's a, there's a Western Union about doing that. Um, and he ended up getting what would, what would have been a dream assignment. He, he was assigned to Hawaii. And, um, you know, what, what a great place for a young aviator to be. Um, not knowing what was going to happen on December 7th, 1941. But it's really interesting, um, you know, th th he was a football star before he was in the Navy. That's, that's him right there. Um, this is a, a picture of him fishing with his brother before he was in the Navy. This is Lee Fox. This is his brother. 
Um, and then here's some various photos. And we have a bunch of photos. We just put a few of them out. He actually made the teen topic uh, column in, when he was in Florida. Um, it's uh, talking about some dances and things like that. And you know, when I when you go through his letters, um, it, it it's just really. You know, we know what's going to happen to him, but at the time he's writing to his parents about learning the guitar. He was learning how to play um, Hawaiian guitar. He was he was going to take up surfing. Um, so you know, be, being in Hawaii before the war would be a great assignment. And um, of course, we all know what happened on December seventh. just mentioned some of these paper items and letters and uh, telegrams. Here is a Western Union telegram and note the date, September 8th of 1941. And it says, received orders today on two hours notice, departing for Pearl Harbor. Spent weekend in Los Angeles, have had grand time in San Diego, will write on arrival. Love, Lee. And then we get here to this next Western Union telegram. This one is dated October 28, 1941, and it says, Arrived San Diego, okay, off course 50 miles, but made record hop of 17 hours, Lee. Okay, and then here is a picture of Lee Fox. And then here is uh, another letter that was sent by Lee Fox, and in it, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but in it he, he talks about uh, the, the Army-Navy game and how the, the Navy had won and there were some people who had placed odds on the Army who had lost some money and they had a, a big party and celebration and there were free beer and pretzels. And if you look at the date that the letter was written, it's November 30th, 1941. So Lee Fox was living his best life and had no idea that within a week and a half, well, it would all be over. During the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, um, I was asked to go on NPR and do a presentation about Lee Fox, and um, also some of the local news covered covered it, the story as well. And after that happened, um, one of Lee Fox's brothers, surviving brothers, his, his little brother, um, came to the museum and said, "I'm Lee Fox's brother," and I was like, "Wow, it's great to meet you," and and um, you know, the, the uniform and, and some of the other stuff had um, made its way into the collector's market 20 years ago, and it was in another collection, and we had gotten it from them um, a few years before. And, um, and he was so thrilled that his brother's memory was being honored here that um, he brought some more items. And um, I think we pointed out he was from, Lee Fox was from New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, which is just north of Gettysburg. And um, his brother lived a little bit west of Gettysburg, so he was fairly close. And he brought some other photographs. Um, when Lee Fox died, he, his mother um, was contacted to, to do some bond drive stuff. So here, here's, here's a, uh, a, a newspaper article from the Harrisburg PA um, Evening News and some movie stars came out for this Bond drive and, and this is uh, Paulette Goddard right here with Lee Fox's mother 
And, um, you know, it's probably an un unusual moment for her. She's in grief, but she's meeting these Hollywood people, and the look on her face is just, um, you know, makes you think quite a bit. Um, so later on, Lee Fox w was honored by the Navy by naming a destroyer after him. So these are a series of photos that this family member gave me, Lee Fox's brother, and his mother got to christen the ship, the USS Lee Fox. And these are some photographs. This is the, the rest of the family. This is the brother who gave me the items, um, the last surviving brother. And, and I was very happy to get this. And, and I, I had read that a ship was named after Lee Fox. And, um, you know, but it, it's always great when a family member comes back and appreciates what you're doing and, um, you know, can add a little bit more to the story. And here's one that I didn't talk about before. This is his final resting place. You know, he, he when he was killed, a, a bomb hit, and I, I don't know how much of his remains were, were recovered, but this is his final resting place, which, which is, is in New Cumberland, or it's in Pennsylvania here. So, a very interesting group, you know, here's a guy who became an aviator, had everything to live for, a dashing young officer, and, and his, his life was cut short, and uh, just the tragedy of war.